At the age of 20, Princess Elizabeth of Hesse-Darmstadt became betrothed to Russian Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich. Prior to this, all other suitors had been declined. The princess had fallen in love with the Grand Duke in her youth from their first meeting and could not envision herself as anyone else's wife. When Sergei Alexandrovich proposed to Elizabeth, she was overjoyed. In those days, it was said that there were only two beauties in Europe and both were named Elizabeth. Elizabeth of Austria, the wife of Emperor Franz Joseph, and Elizabeth Fyodorovna. The bride captivated all her new relatives. She appeared beside the Empress, and it was as if the sun had blinded us. I hadn't seen such beauty in a long time. She walked modestly, shyly, like a dream, like a vision, recalled Grand Duke Konstantin Konstantinovich Romanov. According to one of the ladies present at the wedding, Elizabeth Fyodorovna was the most beautiful bride ever to have been married in the court church. For her wedding, Elizabeth Fyodorovna received truly regal gifts, one of which was a magnificent emerald parure. This exquisite set once belonged to the mother of Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich, Empress Maria Alexandrovna, and included a tiara, necklace, earrings and brooch. The court jeweler Bolin crafted this kokoshnik tiara from gold and silver, featuring seven cabochon-cut emeralds surrounded by intricate diamond filigree. The ornamentation of stylized diamond lilies symbolized love and happiness. In Russian crown jewels, jewelers always anticipated the possibility of replacing large stones with others. They often secured these stones in tiaras with screws, allowing them to be removed and set into different jewelry pieces. These same emeralds were set into another Kokoshnik tiara. After the death of her husband, Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich, Elizabeth Fyodorovna withdrew from worldly life and dedicated herself to serving God. She returned some of the jewels, including the Emerald Parure, to the Romanov family, while selling most of the others to fund the construction and maintenance of the Martha and Mary convent, where she became the abbess. When she distributed her jewels, she gave the Emerald Tiara from Maria Alexandrovna's collection to her husband's brother, Grand Duke Paul Alexandrovich, he had lived abroad with his morganatic wife for a long time, while his children, Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna and Grand Duke Dmitri Pavlovich, were raised by Sergei Alexandrovich. Thus, after the death of his brother, Grand Duke Paul Alexandrovich inherited his mother's parure. By that time, it comprised a kokoshnik tiara, a lavish necklace where seven large cabochon emeralds were connected in a rhombus pattern with dangling emerald drops set with diamonds matching earrings with large emerald drops affixed to significant diamonds, and a brooch featuring a rare large cabochon emerald in a diamond ornament with a drop-shaped cabochon hanging from it. Paul gifted this entire set to his daughter, Maria Pavlovna the Younger, for her wedding to Swedish Prince Wilhelm in 1908. During the revolution, Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna the Younger managed to escape to Romania, where she sold the tiara and necklace to Serbian King Alexander, later Alexander I of Yugoslavia, who presented them to his fiancée, Romanian Princess Maria, as a wedding gift. In 1923, Maria commissioned Cartier to reset the necklace in a platinum setting. Experts regarded it as an outstanding work by Cartier in this style. Maria last wore the tiara and necklace in 1944 at the wedding of her son Peter II to Greek Princess Alexandra in London. Queen Alexandra wore the jewels in 1947 at the ball celebrating the wedding of Princess Elizabeth and Philip Mountbatten. Five years later, the jewellery was sold to the Parisian jeweller Van Cleef and Arpels. The historical emeralds were removed from the tiara and sold individually. Nevertheless, due to its historical significance, the tiara has survived to this day. The sold emeralds were replaced with artificial ones and the tiara is now exhibited at the company's headquarters on Place Vendôme in Paris. What happened to the necklace remains a mystery as a piece of such magnitude, it is unlikely to be worn around the neck in its original form today. Thus, it is highly probable that it was dismantled, possibly sold in parts or repurposed into other jewelry pieces. Another magnificent piece belonging to Elizabeth Fyodorovna is a luxurious aquamarine tiara, though it is more commonly known as the Hesse tiara. Understanding its history clarifies this distinction. The stunning aquamarine tiara was part of a set that included a necklace, bracelet, and a pair of earrings. Despite each piece's unique appearance, the parure was created in a cohesive style, with the knot motif being predominant. The tiara is designed as a floral garland intertwined with diamond knots. 
The garland rests on a diamond base with a floral pattern. Five diamond knots top five pear-shaped aquamarines encircled by diamonds. The necklace features an aquamarine garland bound by double diamond knots. Nine square-shaped aquamarines, each framed by diamonds, adorn the necklace, which measures 35.5 centimeters in length. The bracelet comprises six cushion-cut aquamarines, linked by double knots resembling four-leaf clovers. The bracelet measures 17.5 centimeters in length. The tiara, necklace, and bracelet were crafted by the artisans of the Fabergé Jewelry House. The pair of aquamarine earrings featuring cushion-cut aquamarines was created later by the jeweler Koch. According to the catalogue of the auction, the story goes that the Grand Duchess later passed the aquamarine perua to her brother, Grand Duke Ernest Louis of Hesse and by Rhine. The jewellery was inherited by his younger son Ludwig. Grand Duke Ludwig gifted the parure to his relative, Princess Dorothea of Hesse, on her wedding day, April 1, 1959. It was Princess Dorothea of Hesse who put the jewellery up for auction. As usual, the buyers of such items remain anonymous. However, there is a photo from a Versace fashion show featuring a model bride wearing the tiara from Grand Duchess Elizabeth Feodorovna's aquamarine parure. Grand Duchess Elizabeth's most cherished piece of jewellery was the Grand Emerald and Diamond Corsage Ornament. This renowned Devant de Corsage, or Corsage brooch, belonged to Elizabeth Feodorovna Romanova. The brooch featured a cascading design of diamond chains. The top tier was adorned with detachable brooches set with large cabochon emeralds surrounded by diamond floral motifs. The middle tier displayed nine small, round cabochon emeralds interspersed among small diamonds. In all three tiers, there were 31 drop-shaped emeralds, each ending in a leaf-like design. In 1905, the corsage ornament was sold on the international market. After the assassination attempt on her husband in 1905, Elizabeth Fyodorovna sold her jewels to fund the establishment of the Martha and Mary convent. She likely understood that such luxurious pieces, like this corsage ornament, were too valuable and recognizable to be sold in Russia. This is probably why the necklace ended up on the international market and was acquired by the Turkish Sultan. On June 15, 1904, in celebration of their 20th wedding anniversary, Grand Duke Sergei Alexandrovich presented his wife, Grand Duchess Elizabeth Fyodorovna, with an amethyst brooch. The piece, crafted by Fabergé, featured a remarkably vibrant Siberian amethyst cut in a very flat step design and framed with a delicate silver border of small rose-cut diamonds. It was topped with the Roman numeral X and the Grand Duchess's initials beneath an imperial crown. After the assassination of Sergei Alexandrovich, Elizabeth Fyodorovna parted with her jewels, either selling them or giving them to close friends and family. The fate of the anniversary amethyst brooch is difficult to trace. It is known only that it is currently held in a private collection. And which of the jewellery you like the most? Write your comments.